Did you know one in six children face some kind of mental health concern each year? And help is too often in short supply, especially in rural parts of Idaho. This Thursday, September 26, Boise State Public Radio is holding a special event in Marsing to talk about rural mental health issues, and we'd like to invite you to come, especially if you or someone you know lives or works in Owyhee or Canyon Counties. The event is free and open to the public, and dinner will be provided. So meet us at Marsing High School this Thursday, September 26, from 6 to 8 p.m. for an important panel conversation on building connections between teens, families, and their support networks. Find event details at boisestatepublicradio.org slash events. From Boise State Public Radio, this is The Connector, Idaho's daily news. Good morning, I'm Michael Scherer. It's Thursday, September 12th, and here are today's headlines. Congress is almost a year behind on passing an update to the Farm Bill, a major package that includes everything from crop insurance to nutrition. And experts say the current version of the bill is likely to expire at the end of this month. Jonathan Coppas is a law professor at the University of Illinois. He says that lack of action has frustrated farmers. It's particularly magnified right now as, as crop prices have really fallen over the summer now. So farmers are feeling a lot more Uh, economic stress. More than 300 agriculture groups wrote a letter to Congress urging it to pass a new farm bill by year's end. That includes the Colorado Association of Wheat Growers, Utah Pork Producers, and the Idaho Dairymen's Association. By 2050, extreme heat linked to climate change could cause one in four steel bridges to collapse. That's according to research from Hussam Mahmoud at Colorado State University. He says fluctuations in temperature, humidity, and moisture are causing the joints and beams that hold bridges together to expand and contract rapidly. If we did end up continue to progress along a very severe climate warming, then we would have major problems. That's because most bridges were not designed to handle extreme heat. He says those facing the highest risk are in the northern Rockies and Plains, upper Midwest and the Northwest. The federal government is working to address the problem. It's spending more than $100 billion on repairing and building bridges and roads to be resilient to extreme weather. Valley Regional Transit is canceling its Eagle On Demand Route 160 as of October 1st. Abigail Moody has more. During an Eagle City Council meeting in August, residents were informed that bus riders won't be able to travel from Eagle to Meridian and Boise anymore. We will be discontinuing our Eagle On Demand service. That City Council member Helen Russell during the meeting where they approved their 2025 fiscal budget. The city's reasoning for the change was the lack of usage from citizens. Valley Regional Transit's website says, quote, Transit services often take a year or more to fully realize ridership potential. The Eagle Route started a year ago. The line gave Eagle residents a way to travel the valley. Kelly from Caldwell spoke out at the August meeting. She told council members she takes a bus to Eagle to enjoy the city's offerings. Russell responded, the ridership just was not there. Well, I tried, but I really tried. Since VRT is mainly funded by federal grants and local financial support, a cut of funding by the city forced them to reduce their lines in Eagle. After September 30th, the only VRT services for Eagle will be a program for disabled patrons and those over the age of 60. Beyond Access requires an application and approval in advance to use the service. Abigail Moody, Boise State Public Radio News. We have all heard that fentanyl is an extremely dangerous drug, but what else should you know about it? Next Thursday on September 19th, the South Central Public Health District will present a fentanyl awareness informational event. Last year, 197 Idaho drug overdose deaths could be directly attributed to fentanyl, Overdoses have increased each year for the past six years. Often, the drug is mixed with other illegal substances or laced in fake pills. In partnership with the Idaho Department of Education, Idaho State Police, and the Idaho Fentanyl Education Project, 
SCPHD will present a film screening and an information session on this threat to our community. It will be at the King Fine Arts Center in Burley, Idaho on the 19th. Are Idaho's baked potatoes unlucky? No, they're just very popular. Wealth of Geeks conducted a poll of 3,000 people to establish America's 50 favorite fall foods. Coming in at number one, Illinois pumpkin pie. Number two, Texas chili. And number three, Alabama pecan pie. The mighty baked potato was a little further down the list at number 13. But in this case, 13 isn't unlucky. It's delicious. Tamarack Resort has had to suspend operations because of fires. Miles from the mountain ridge, the boulder and lava fires came together. But thousands of firefighters and support teams have been working to combat the flames. The combined fires have burned over 78,000 acres total. Fire breaks were created over the summer in anticipation of fire threats. Yesterday, an early afternoon storm brought plenty of rain, but also lightning and winds. Evacuations were not required, but homeowners told to be prepared for this contingency. An Idaho District Court judge could rule today on Attorney General Raul Labrador's latest challenge to a ballot initiative that seeks to end Idaho's closed-party primary elections and create a system of ranked-choice voting in general elections. Both sides were in Ada County District Court yesterday for a summary judgment hearing. It lasted about 90 minutes. District Judge Patrick J. Miller did not issue a ruling, but said his goal is to have his opinion out today. If Proposition 1 goes up for a vote on November 5th as scheduled, it would take a simple majority of votes to pass. And if approved, Proposition 1 would make changes to both the primary and general elections in Idaho. First, it would end Idaho's closed-party primary elections and replace them with a single primary election that is open to all voters and all candidates, regardless of party affiliation. The top four candidates with the most votes in the primary election would all advance to the general election, regardless of party affiliation. Also, ranked choice voting would increase the time it takes to count initial unofficial election results. There is a large arts and music festival in downtown Boise this weekend. The Hyde Park Street Fair will be happening at Camelsback Park starting Friday afternoon and ending on 6 p.m. Sunday. The celebration is in its 43rd year. Lots of food, music, and entertainment can be expected with a vibe that skews hippie. There's even a geodesic dome. And the Lataw County Fair begins today and runs through Sunday. It's at the Lataw County Fairgrounds and features animal judging, food vendors, and live entertainment. The fair will run until 5 p.m. Sunday, and one of the last events will be a 1.30 p.m. goat costume contest and obstacle course. Logging sports will take place at 1 p.m. Sunday on the main lawn. The Lataw County Fair will feature local bands and live entertainment from local schools. Boise City Council President Colin Nash is serving as acting mayor during Mayor Lorne McLean's trip to Africa. Nash began serving as acting mayor Monday following McLean's departure. As acting mayor, Nash will preside over city council meetings and plans to attend some events for McLean in her absence. Mayor McLean is visiting the Gorongosa National Park in Mozambique, which has been in partnership with Zoo Boise since 2013. Through the partnership, Zoo Boise has worked to coordinate guided trips through the park to further strengthen the unique relationship between Boise and Mozambique, according to a press release. McLean will return to her duties on Monday, September 30th. And that's today's episode of The Connector. I'm Michael Scherer, and we'll see you back here tomorrow. To stay in touch with the news between now and then, check out BoiseStatePublicRadio.org or download the free Boise State Public Radio app. Thanks for listening.